Hi, everybody. Sorry, I wasn't sure if we were on or not. Welcome to Lunchtime Beauty Break with Jillian. I'm Jillian, and I am so excited because I have a lot of ground to cover today. We are going to be talking about the hottest trends of 2016 and the ones that are really going to keep going into 2017, the ones that you want to really grab onto and hang on to. Um, but first of all, what I want to say is the number one trend, and um, this this is not just coming from me, although this is something I, I really believe in. It's something that the designers and everybody is embracing now, and that is the true you is emerging. What do you love? Like, bring yourself to the table in beauty, in fashion, like, come as you are. And, and for me, for instance, what makes you feel good for me? Shaving my head for my nonprofit, right? That makes me feel good. Wearing a lot of black eyeliner makes me feel good. So we would love your comments and tips and tricks about what makes you feel good or if there's anything that you want to share with us that makes um, that makes you feel good or might make somebody else feel good. So come on in, join the party. You know we love it. And I'm going to get right into now the top beauty trends that are moving into 2017 that you want to keep. Okay, so you probably heard me talk about a few of these a few months ago. Um, there were like really top 10 trends that are moving in, but I have to tell you, I really, really reviewed a lot of them, and I think that some of them are just better left over here on the table because they don't really translate from the runway into your real life, and that's what I like to be about, real life informational. So there were things like the graphic eyeliner, where you wear your eyeliner down here, or you do something really crazy with it, or bleached out eyebrows, which I really did want to try, but my hairdresser refused to do it, which I'm kind of like, thank you, Stephen, for not doing it now, um, and glitter everything, glitter everything down the runways, glitter lips, glitter eyes. Not saying I don't love it, but glitter lips, not something you can really, really wear comfortably in real life. So having said that, drum roll, the best keepers of 2017 are the following. Are you ready? Huge lashes. Lashes, lashes, lashes. You remember me saying that a few months ago. This trend is going to go all the way through spring. I don't know what's going to happen after spring, but right now, you want to get those big lashes. Now, what I want to do with this trend, because it's so important, is walk you through a couple of little tips and tricks on how to make your lashes really big and dough-like. You'll notice I don't have lashes on today. I have no mascara and just a very um, a little bit of a black top line to make it easy. So let's start and let's walk through how to get really beautiful, fluffy, giant lashes for the season. I'm going to walk through this as easy as possible. And the best way to make your eyes pop, number one, with lashes don't do a smoky eye with giant lashes because the black or the dark color takes away from the actual lash. So what I recommend is doing something fleshy. Now I pulled the delectables. There's a couple of reasons I pulled delectables. Number one, it's my favorite palette that we make, and number two, it's actually on sale for the at the um, on LauraGeller.com. It's like it's like half price, I think. It's and this is my favorite. So. Um, and it's a delectable in smoky. So see these natural colors? You want to just wear something a shade or two darker than your own lid. Just a shade or two darker. In the 60s, they would have done more of a pastel, but we don't want to do a caricature. We just want it to look great. So just do something really clean, really even. Like I already put on my lid, I did the um, creme brulee. I did it really light. I did it all over one sweep. Then I want you to line. I want you to uh, tight line. You know what? We're going to get serious. You know I start getting stripped down when we get serious. Okay. I want you to take a black liner. I always use eye care. That's just my thing. It's waterproof. It's creamy. But any black liner you have that's going to stay in place is perfect. Now, again, I'm already lined, but I'm just going to walk you through it one more time. So you've based your lid. Okay. I'm going to go back. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Okay. Now we're going to take the black liner. Just tight line the top. Get right into the lash line, right in there, okay? Tight, tight, tight. We're not going to do a dramatic line. We're just tight lining. So you're going to do that to both sides. Don't do it as thick as I have it. Actually, do it a little bit thinner. Now, here we go. Normally, get your eyelash curler. You hear me say, I prefer a lash that's curled halfway down, which means I just like a little crimp in the lash, but this is a different look. This is what we really want to go for those doe eyes, for those big, um, kind of a homage really to um, Twiggy, those really beautiful big top and bottom lashes. So I want to show you a little trick with the eyelash curler. It's been around for a long time, um, so I'm going to walk you through the first step. The first step, 
I want you to grab your lashes and get all the way at the base. Now remember, I know before that I said I want you just to get halfway through, but now I want you to get to the baseline. I want you to give it a nice, good, gentle squeeze. You want to wait like 20, 30 seconds. Ooh, those lashes will be standing straight up. Now I want to show you another trick. Now, this is a trick that I had actually seen before and I've used it um, maybe in some photo shoots, but I actually forgot about it. And then I, I saw it again in a Wayne Goss tutorial. So shout out to Wayne Goss. He had a great eye tutorial about curling lashes. So he did this trick. I think it's a fabulous trick and it'll really work to help you get the doe eyes. So you've done at the bottom. Then I want to take you halfway. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back kind of halfway and you're going to lean. I want you to push that back. See how I'm leaning it back? So what we're doing now is we're making the lashes fall back. So you do one straight up and one lean back, okay? Once that's done, we're gonna do something different now. We're gonna cocktail our mascara. So if you have a mascara home, I think we all have a drawer full of mascaras. I think it's just kind of like one of those things. Uh, find a mascara that's really thin, um, almost like your cleanest one, your most natural mascara that you own. Now what I'm going to use today is Lash Fortifier. This is Laura's primer, but it's really more of a, a very clean mascara, uh, more than a primer, because primers are normally very thick and very white and very chunky, and that's not what we want for this look. So this is why we're going to cocktail the mascara. So what you're going to do is I'm going to take Lash Fortifier. It's jet black. It's super, super clean. I'm going to get in, and I'm going to turn in a minute, but I'm going to get in at the root. Now I'm going to push up, and I'm going to start fanning. So I'm going from the root, I'm pushing up, and I'm going out. I want to literally create and do it the same way I would do if you were opening a fan. That's the kind of effect we want for the first part. So this is just the first part, so already we start to get that effect. You want to fan them out. So lean in, lean up, and lean out. This is your first clean layer. With this look, it's important that you do the bottom lashes, and you want to do them strong, okay? So I'm going to go to the bottoms, and I'm going all the way, as many lashes as I can grab. Actually, I'm one of those weird people that my bottom lashes are almost a little bit longer than my top. It's a little frustrating, but that's okay. There are bigger things to complain about. And I'm going to really get in there. So now I've got a base. I've got a beautiful, clean mascara base. I'm going to give a minute to dry. So while that's drying, remember, we did. I'm sorry for all the noise, by the way. New York City is right in back of us. It is a madhouse here. So we did a nice, clean base. We did a tight line in black. We curled twice. We did a curl up. We did a curl back. We did a very clean one or two coats and fanned out those lashes top and bottom. Now I'm going to take the biggest, fattest, chunkiest mascara I can get my hands on in this office. And for me, that's going to be Laura Geller's Drama Lash. I love Drama Lash. I mean, check out that brush. That brush is enormous. And it's a gel mascara, so it's not really heavy. I always do this on every mascara. I like to take off any excess. Now that I've got that beautiful, clean first layer, the reason I didn't use a primer is because I didn't want it to be thick and chunky. I just want it to be big and bold. We want like colossal, bold lashes, and we want them to be top and center strong. So now I've done, uh, I've did my, uh, my base layer, and I'm going to go back in with this mascara, and I'm going to focus now on up and into the middle. Focus on the middle of the, of the lash, middle and up. You're still fanning, but at this point you really are mostly, can you see that? Focusing on the center lash. Now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna focus on these lashes. Center, down. We want Bambi doe eyes. If you wanted a cat eye, it would sweep to the right and we would do a different kind of liner, but we want big Bambi doe eyes. So now I'm gonna go in but remember, the most should be at the center. But now I'm going to go to the corners. Corners. And what you want to do is use this part of the brush because the top point will create 
little groups without being chunky because really that's what we want that's how you create that kind of twiggy look we want little can you see that little group little, little groups that look smooth and clean the reason that's so smooth and clean is because I put a beautiful clean layer of a very thin mascara on first then I used a super big boy um, ultra fat mascara like drama lash to really get the um, the pieces I want. I want like maybe two or three lashes together, but not to look chunky. That's the trick. Now to finish that look off, I'm assuming, can you see that you guys in the, in the camera, the difference? Okay. I feel so bold with this eye. I'm going to use, now this was in the last TSV. This is, you can't buy this separately, but this is um, the Laura Geller's Luster Eyes 24 Hour Eyeliner, but we also make a fabulous calligraphy pen. So if you have a liquid liner at home or a gel liner um, or a calligraphy pen, I want you to use this because this line needs to be really dense and really dark, um, almost shiny, if you will. And I'm just going to go across the top and I'm just going to add a little wing up and out, almost like that little final lash. So that, and I'm going to do one more little trick just to show you, as I want to take a light color, because remember, we don't want this to be a smoky eye. We want this to be Bambi eyes. We want this to be big and bold. So I'm going to take a little bit of the creme, which is a little bit of kind of a banana fleshy color, and I'm going to go under, because I want it to be clean. I want, to, I, want to, I want to pay homage to the 1960s. I don't want to look like I'm in the 1960s, or it becomes a caricature. Let me give it one more coat underneath, because I really want to take it home for you. So again, focus to the center, centers up, double curl makes all the difference in the world. Wow, okay. And there we go. So that would be a really wearable, like mega lash look all the way through, um, really through spring this is going to be. And the best part about this look is that it really marries beautifully to our next look. So I'm not going to repeat that eye, I'm just going to leave that eye plain. So. If y'all could just look at me from this side, that would be amazing. Um, so the next trend that was really big was lips. And the coolest part about lips was I have never seen lips be so definitive. Because um, normally they'll say, oh, on this show we saw some pink. On this show we saw some orange. and this show we saw this. But there were three lip trends that were so bold and really stood out. And that was number one, and it's going to be strong all the way through spring, was the berry and, let's see, can you guys see this? The berries, the maroons, the um, even like a black gray. Anything that was deep and dark, um, you could do it matte, you could do it glossy, any way of doing it. But as long as it was like berry and deep and burgundy and maroon, that was awesome. And what I love, take a look at this girl on the side. She's marrying two trends. You see her lashes? So you get big, gorgeous lashes, and then you get the really deep, deep, deep burgundy maroon lips. So if you're a fan of deep burgundy maroon lips, I pulled two colors that I just really love from us. And those two colors are, you've heard me talk about these before, but this is the uh, Luscious Lips and Chili Spice. And for those of you who saw Alan Eyes, I don't know if you saw us on Beauty IQ, which was such a success. Thank you all so much for those of you that tuned in. But um, Chili Spice, he used it, and I, like I said, sometimes once in a blue moon, I will bust out into a dark color, but it's very rare. But when I do, you know it's got to be something striking. So Chili Spice is a gel formula, and it, it's so satiny, but it gives you that beautiful, deep, burgundy, semi-matte lip that really has great staying power. Then the other one that I love is the um, Broadway Plum. This is from our Baked Iconic. Check out these two. So if you don't want to do it dark, but you still want depth, the Broadway Plum is amazing. Let me pull back a little bit. Okay. So, the only thing, though, when you wear a dark lip, I want you just to make sure that you keep it clean. You've heard me say this a million times. French vanilla, French vanilla. Keep the mouth clean with, with um, something that's lighter to, to push it forward. Okay? Then we have the next trend. So, we had dark lips, which by the way are, are classic, but they're a little rebellious. There's something about a dark, dark lip that's just, I don't know, it's sassy. I feel like it's got to be sassy to really wear a dark lip. And then the other trend we saw was red. 
classic, true. Listen, red really never goes out of style. It's been in style since really the 30s, and it has never gone out. Take a look. Here's the difference with, with uh, the reds that are coming forward. Notice how these are cherry reds. They're, they're not deep, dark reds, but they have a really nice, light, kind of red apple feel them to feel to them like a like a very Marilyn red and they're also paired with a very clean clean face which I love so let me show you I picked two reds that I think are absolutely gorgeous and on that cherry tone and that is Big Apple Red from the Baked Iconic collection I love this one this is my Marilyn red I think it's so pretty and then we have Luscious Lips in Cherry Sorbet this is another beautiful really true pretty red so those two I think are so pretty. So here's your plums and here's your reds. Now the other trend we saw, so reds are classic for my classic girls. Plums are for my girls that like a little more danger. And then the third one was nudes. And like I said, I've never seen it so polarized before. So it's plum, red, nude. And this is the nudes. Uh, it's This one is mixed a little bit. You'll see the girls have some of them a bleached brow, which I said we weren't even going to go there. But take a look at the nude. Really, really pretty. I do love a nude lip. I can't help it. I can't help myself. So, oh, thanks, Joy. So, let me show you. I know a lot of you have asked me before what lip I wear. I actually... Today? Today. Oh, yay! Well, <laughs> I, guess what? I did a mix today. I did something a little different. I'm so excited to show you. So, for those of you who know me, and I've said it before, I wear sugar cane lip gloss in Color Luster. If they discontinue this, lipstick, this lip gloss, I will be so upset. This has got to be, hands down, one of my top five all-time favorites I've ever used from any brand of anybody I've ever worked for or even tried and played with. There's something about this because it's like that perfect beigey pink, so it's not like crazy, crazy nude, but it's nude. So let me show you this. This is sugar cane, and I'm going to put it on. And then this one is also from Color Luster. And this one is called Pink Cake. Now, this one is something that I would probably not wear alone because it's a little, um, but it's fun because it's really, really, really nude. Look at those two. So, one is Pink Cake. One is Sugar Cane. I mix them together today. Let me show you. And I cheated on my pencil. It's actually an eye pencil that we make called Rose Gold because it's like this beigey color that we use for the eyes. Anyway, so take a look. So, it's Sugar Cane. I just think it makes my lips look so much bigger than they actually are. Because if I took these lips off these gloss, it goes like that, totally deflated. And then I use the um, pink cake for the middle. Because layering really does give your lips that pouty look. It absolutely does. So for the nude, my choices would be sugar cane and pink cake. And quite frankly, I mean, we make some nude lipsticks. Like there's one called... Um, Tony Tannen, there's one called Vista, and they're really nice because they're kind of like brown neutrals. It's something, I don't know, I'm just a fan of like a really juicy, glossy lip. So those are the big lip trends you want to keep. I want you to keep the berry, I want you to keep the red, and you're going to keep the nude. Now, hold on to your hats because what I say next, you're probably going to be like, what? But you just have to trust me. So the next trend that was really huge this year, I'm going to try to get this colors off my hand were for the eyes and that was number one I think you you know is copper because you've heard me talk about that before so sheer beautiful one shade of copper on the eye is like everywhere let me show you I pulled this sheet because this shows the um, very tones of copper can you see this okay so this is a copper with a black this is a red copper and this is just a beautiful brownie copper so copper is really big this year thank you but the second one that's really big, you ready, is blue. I love blue, and I'm so happy that we saw it coming down the runways left and right. But here's the trick, don't, just don't walk away from me yet, because I said blue. Um, on the runways, the way they did it was they really used kind of like electric blue, because remember, everything has to translate down. But you, the trick is to use just a wash of blue. If you start mixing with too many blue colors and mixing it all together, that's when you start getting more, I don't know, showy, cartoonish. It's not the same. It's very editorial. So if you want to make a blue realistic, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before from Laura Geller. It is in my kit. I use it a lot on photo shoots, especially my beautiful self um, photo shoots. This is called Creme Glaze in a Trio. 
they're a little different. These are a really soft eyeshadow. It's a blue, it's a champagne, and it's a bronze. So if you're afraid of blue, the trick is I want you to wear just a single sweep of blue. Like literally the most single sweep you can get. And then you can mix it with just a little bit of gold, and it is so pretty. So let me just take a little bit of um, the blue. Let me show you. First of all, look at this blue. It's not like you think. It's not like blue from the 80s. That one is kind of like blue from the 80s, but it's just going to be done a different way. So let me show you. Now, keep in mind, I have the other trend on this eye, which is massive lashes with a very clean base, but I want to show you how to do the blue on this eye. So what you want to do, and what I love about this one is that it actually has a little bit of iridescence, which is what we saw coming down the runway. It had a little bit of wetness to it. It's a single sweep. It's nothing heavy. It's single sweet blue. And then what you can do, see I would wear it just like that with black liner and mascara, but what you can do is this kit makes it really wearable, is you can take a bronze and you can mix the bronze with it. So you'll still get that hue of blue, but all of a sudden it's so much, it's just much more wearable for you. The other thing, now I don't have water here, but what, oh, I have my drinking water, but what you could do is you can wet it and it becomes electric. So you could, you know what? I don't need to. Let's see if I have a liner brush in here. I'm going to show you this wet. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I'm going to wet this because when you wet these shadows, they become like mega, mega, mega intense. So I'm going to wet the blue. I'm telling you, blue is everywhere, but you just want to make it more realistic. Now I'm going to use this as a liner. Take a look how pretty this is. Now the only thing left for me to do would be to mascara that. And it would just be so soft and not like you think, oh, okay, blue. So let me review, and then I have two things I really want to show you. So number one, lashes, lashes for days. I'm sorry, I kicked the camera. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, everybody. Did I shake you? It was like a little earthquake. <laughs> so lashes for days. Base it really clean so the lashes pop above anything. Do the double curl, line on the inside tight, and use cocktail your mascaras. Try mixing them, fanning them, up and down are equally important to get that wide-eyed Bambi look. Lips. I want you to really get a dark burgundy beautiful plum color. I want you to get a classic red and I want you to get a beautiful nude to get you through the season. Eyes, if you want to try something a little bit different, don't be afraid. I'm telling you, this is really gorgeous. The creme glaze in um, Sandy Lagoon has that really popular blue in it right now. And again, you mix it with a bronze and it's beautiful. No matter what eye color you have, it's going to look phenomenal. I promise you, if you do it right and you mix it with a base color. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is so those are the big ones. Those are the ones that you're going to want to stay with as we move into spring. We'll do another show on spring probably come February, but right now we're still in winter, even though the office is blazing the heat. So that's why I'm wearing a t-shirt. So now that I showed you that, we have some really exciting things coming up. We have a launch at the end of June called January. January. Did I say June? Sorry already in spring. At the end of January, it's called 50 Kisses, OMG. Look at these. Look at these colors. I am dying. I'm so excited about these. So 50 Kisses is a, um, it's a, it's called Lip Locking Liquid Color, but it's so cute. It's like they last for 50 kisses, but it's so beautiful because it's satiny. So when you put it on, it dries, but it's not drying because a lot of long wear formulas are so drying. I don't care what they say. They are drying. This one is not. And the colors are so beautiful. Take a look at this. Let me swatch you a few. That violet I am dying for. By the way, you should know that's probably going to be one of the most popular colors for spring coming. This one is another, and I'm kind of teasing you with the spring colors. This one is um, called Love Blush. Love this color. Spring, just as a quick tease, is going to be all about pastels. Here's a gorgeous nude, but look at these. Look at the texture on these. They are so luscious. They are amazing. And there's reds, and there's a coral, and there's a burgundy. So I am so pumped about these. But these will be out at the end of January. Then we've got something coming up to called Cover Lock. So I'm going to show you in just a minute on Joy. Cover Lock is what we call a tattoo covering foundation. You just need a tiny little bit of this. It, it, 
is so beautiful. It like covers everything, but it's not heavy, which we love, but it is super covering. So let me show you. We did the light on Joy. So I wanted to do it backwards because it was just easier for me to show it to you this way. So this is the foundation and on Joy we did it. This is porcelain. Take a look. And there's her cute little star tattoo, which I really wouldn't want to cover up because I love it. It's just to show you. So it is a tattoo covering foundation that feels super lightweight on the skin. That's coming the end of January, so I'm excited about that. So I just wanted to say, because I won't see you until the new year, um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy everything. I, I just appreciate you guys so much, and I love your comments, and I, I love the support and the love, and I'm sending it back to you. And we will see you in the new year with a new show. And that is it. Love and peace. Have a wonderful holiday, and I'll see everybody soon.